Welcome to ECLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be doing uh, rates of reaction and reversible reactions and for today we are going to be focusing on factors affecting the rate of reaction, specifically catalyst. So we have been looking at the factors affecting uh, rate of reaction. So for today we are going to focus on catalyst. You look at the function of a catalyst in a reaction and how it affects the rate and then also do a question. So catalysts are substances which alter the rate of a chemical reaction without actually being consumed. For example, in finely divided iron, we use it in the upper process. You notice here it's we use the iron, but it doesn't take part in the reaction. It just helps to improve the reaction. So they alter the rate of a chemical reaction, but usually remain unchanged at the end of that reaction. They can therefore be used at the end of the reaction or they can like they can be used later on they don't have to be fully be used up so they usually act as a, by providing a surface over which particles can react so that's the reason why the solid catalysts are usually more effective when they are ground into powder so you notice like the finely divided iron is better than the iron granules and then they form also a short-lived intermediate so they form some intermediate uh, products which also break up to form the final product so yes they they sort of like take part but not really taking part because at the end of the day we don't get different uh kind of a catalyst it's the same catalyst although it gives a uh, it helps into breaking up the reactants to get the actual product it also function by absorbing the reaction the reaction so generally a catalyst increases the rate of reaction by improving uh, providing a different pathway or a lower pathway or lower activation energy so this means more collision can overcome this energy barrier and result into a reaction so it's lowest the activation energy of the reaction and they usually not they usually reaction specific you can't use one catalyst for all reactions for example, manganese peroxide is used in the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to give water and carbon and oxygen, and then vanadium 5 oxide or platinum they are used in contact process, uh, and then platinum is used in nostril process, uh, finely divided iron and vanadium is used in harbor process, nickel catalyst is used in the hardening of oils in hydrogenation. Then copper 2 oxide is used in the preparation of a uh, reaction of ethanol to produce ethanol. Then titanium 4 chloride is used in silicon method for polymerization of alkenes. And you can see from this reaction, we do not use the same catalyst. It's different catalysts for different reactions. So if you look at the graph of a catalyst, where a catalyst has been used in a reaction, so you notice, for example, if you are doing the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and we use a catalyst, if we calculate the volume of the gas produced, the one that has a catalyst produces more gas quickly with less time in comparison to the one that doesn't have a catalyst, as you can see in the graph. So the graph of the one that has a catalyst will be like more, like it, the, the volume is produced more at a lower time than the one that does not. So if you look at this question, you will focus on drawing the graph and then the rest of the question will be posted at the video so you can work out the rest of the question in your own time. So let's look at the question. So we have this graph paper and we have the values in the table. So the first thing is to get the correct scale. So on the y-axis, you have been told to put the volume. So let's indicate that. So volume of oxygen. and it's in centimeter cubed you can go ahead and put down everything and then time in seconds so we need to choose a correct scale you can see on the lower scale on the x-axis we need to have time the highest is 240 the lowest is zero degrees Celsius. so it means we need to start at zero so we want to choose the scale so this is what we are going to choose 
So for the time we are going to use for every one centimeter present 20 seconds. You notice for up to 240, our graph may not accommodate up to 240, but you notice they produce the same kind of volume. So we are going to do a bit of some assumption in regards to the last value. So you can do up to the 40th value. So this is going to be 20, 30, 40. Uh, 20, 40, uh, 60, 80, 120, uh, 40, 160, 180, and then 200. And then for the y axis, um, the highest is 40, so you pick uh, 1 centimeter, it presents 10 centimeters cubed. So 20, 30, 40, 50. So we will plot up to where it's possible for this graph. And then at your own free time with your big, bigger graph, you can follow through and you can go through the steps together. So the first point is at zero degree, zero seconds and zero volume. So we put that point. And then next is at 30. So that is between 20 and 40, and the volume is 19. So the volume is going to be close to 20. Remember, for every uh, two small squares represent one centimeter cubed. So 19 is going to be just before 20, two squares down. And then uh, at 60, so 60, we are going to move to produce 27 centimeters cubed. So 27, this is 25, 26, 27. It's just before you get to uh, a few a few squares above 25. And then at 90, so this is 80, 90 is in between. At 90, we produce 33 centimeters cubed. So this is 30, 31, 32, 33 is just above here because this is 35 and then at 120 so this is uh, 120 is here at 120 we produce 36 so this is 35 here so that 36 is going to be two squares up and then uh, we go to 180 so this is 120 140 160 180 this is our 180 180 produces 39. So that 9 is this is 40, it means it's two squares below. And then the rest is 210 and 240, which we are not be able to place in our graph at the moment. So we are going to just plot what we have, but remember it's stagnating. So if you were to to do an assumption of 210, it would be somewhere here, and another, the, the next one would be still be the same place. So this is how our graph would look like. So we can join the curves. I like starting the curves uh, from here in my case because of the accuracy of the curve, but in your curve, you can start from any direction. Ensure that your, all the points are on the curve. Uh, so let's rejoin that again. Yes, now this is how our curve looks like and it's tapering off as you can notice in the last two points. So you see how easy it is to draw this curve of volume against time. So you can be able to use the curve to answer the question. So we can do the first uh, rate of reaction in the first 30 seconds and then you can finish the rest. So the first 30 seconds is basically you go to the where the 30 seconds it, you you extrapolate to this point and then you draw an a tangent. So use a ruler to draw a tangent and then after drawing a tangent you join the tangent. Still use a ruler to draw uh, to join the tangent. So I'm joining the tangent by hand but make sure you join yours by ruler. So you have volume uh, 1 which is going to be at 15 centimeters cubed and then volume 2 which is at 20, 20, mm, 25, 26, 27, 28.
centimeters cubed and then we have time which is this is going to be 10 20 so one small square represents two seconds so this is 10 12 14 so it's 14 here so it's 14 seconds to 30 to 60 seconds so change in y is going to be the volume which is 28 divided minus 15 centimeters cubed over change in x which is um 60 seconds minus 14 seconds which will give us so if we do 28 minus 15 we get a 13 if we do 60 minus 14 we get 46 so the rate is going to be 13 divided by 46 which will give us 0 0.283 and this is going to be centimeters cubed per second so this is a sample of the first question. You can go ahead and finish the rest of the questions. It's going to be posted um, after the video. So see you in the next lesson as we focus on the light, the last uh, factor that causes a, a change in the rate of reaction. See you then.